print as such, you know, newspapers on paper, I think most people agree has a good shot at not being around in 15 years, 20 years. You know, that thing that arrives on your doorstep or that you buy at a newsstand. But the quality of journalism that you see in something like the Washington Post, the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, pick your favorite, had better be around or we are lost. In other words, we can't exist as a functioning democracy without the best kind of democracy, without the best kind of journalism. And if we try, we're going to, we're going to do it at our peril. So whether or not it exists on paper is, is a technological question, is a time question. But whether journalism, really rigorous journalism exists, is, a, is an existential question. They made a mistake. I think, I think newspapers bought into a, an evangelical uh, banner of information wants to be free, and they thought if they could just build up, build up, build up, build up traffic, then web advertising would come in and it would be redemptive. It would save the day. But as we know, web advertising is much, much cheaper than advertising on pieces of paper. And so while sites did build up traffic, it didn't bring in the revenue they wanted. So they now have to double back and build up paywalls. They have to go back and say, look, if you want this quality journalism, you have to pay. And I, thankfully, that was one mistake that the, the New Yorker managed to avoid. Well, because I, have, I sometimes feel I have enough of a platform. I have the magazine itself, which exists online, which exists, you can get on your iPad, on your laptop, on your phone. So th that's, that's a projection of me in some way, too. Um, and I write a lot. And I just, sometimes you just only have 24 hours in a day. And I, and I see people with Twitter consuming some of their time and energy that I don't necessarily want to do. I use Twitter. I, I use Twitter search more than is absolutely healthy, maybe. And I use it in the reporting process, but I don't tweet. That's right. And I, you know, I've gotten some, uh, some people in the office think I'm right. Some people in the office don't. For now, I, I don't see it as immensely valuable for me. The Graham family's inability to hold on to it, which hold on to a superb newspaper with the best values and intentions, and a city that still reads it quite uh, vociferously and lovingly, is an unintended consequence of the technological revolution. That is, you know, the Boston Globe. Say all these things. This is we're going through a, a technological tsunami that began, in fact, quite a while ago, a long time ago. But the unintended consequences of it include that. And that's so it's a reflection of its times. It's a great question. And I, I, I think, I don't believe in the great man theory of history. I don't think all historical currents are the res responsibility of or the result of you know, some singular personality exerting his or her will on history. But we as human beings are interested in other human beings innately. We are immensely curious about them, whether they're pop singers or first basemen or politicians. And so I, my reflex to get into a subject is often through the profile, through one, one person. And um, I've done that in sports, I've done it in politics, I've done it in international relations, and it kind of floats my boat.